video we will go over Excel homework 1.1 Heartbreak step by step together. All right. Um, in this project, you will investigate the heart rate at different ages. You will also provide the result as a column chart. We will use a cell reference or a single formula where appropriate in order to receive full credit. Do not copy and paste values or type values as you, as you will not receive full credit for your answer. So this part, um, the second part that I just read, it will come in every Excel homework. Well, we're just going to always type in formulas and use cell reference instead of actually typing in the numbers. So um, this is the first one that we're going to do together. Um, let's see, oh, very short, just three steps. Um, I'll, I will go over how to download the file and how to save and submit the file. But in these short YouTube videos, I will be doing the steps. Um, I'm providing a couple resources. We will go over a couple Excel homeworks in classes together. Um, I will also I created Google Slides for all 20 Excel homework that you will do. And usually that's okay, that's enough. But if you ever need extra resources, and then you can watch this video where I will go over step by step. And if you need more help, then we will zoom and we will figure out what went wrong together. Okay? All right. So step one, start Excel, download and open the workbook name, chapter one, one heart rate start. We did that. You know, this is a short one, but as we go over more of a more, more, because there's going to be some long Excel homework where you'll have like 12 or 13 steps or maybe like 20 if we do the one that's called budget right before project one. So um, I like to just kind of mark what I did. So I just put some orange highlight over step one. I'm done with that. Step two, in cell C11, okay, C11, use the appropriate formula to calculate the heart rate for age in cell C10. So remember they said um, heart rate is, well, they didn't say it yet, but uh, there's a formula that we will use to calculate somebody's heart rate and that is based on their age. So what we're going to do is we're going to, well, use that formula um, to find the heart rate for somebody whose age is saved in cell C10. So let's see how old that person is and let's find the heart rate for that person. Format C11 as number with one decimal place. When I first assigned this Excel homework, everybody kind of, not everybody, well, a lot of us just lose points because we forget little things like this. Let's pay attention to this part. We're going to format this cell C11 as number with one decimal place. Okay, you ready? All right, let's go to C11 and do what they just told us to do. Um, so the question sheet, we're going to go find C11. Hello, C is right here. 11 is right here. Here we go. All right, so um, notice, remember they said the input age is saved in C8, C10. This person is 18 years old. So what we're going to do is we'll find the heart rate for somebody who is 18 years old. Now, what is a heart rate formula? Here we go. They gave it to us right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula right here. Um, heart rate is equal sign. I'm going to copy that down. I'm going to write that down, okay? So first, type in equal sign. Open parenthesis, 220 minus. Now, they said age, right? What's the age? 18, but I'm not going to type in 18. They said use cell reference. So go and click on the cell that has C18. Okay. So it's going to look like parenthesis 220 minus C10. Close the parenthesis. And what do we do to that? We multiply this by 70%. And that's it. And you hit enter. This is the heart rate for someone whose input age is, what, 18. Now they wanted you to format this as number with one decimal place. Now, when I format, guys, I just use this, the, the, these ribbons up here. You see, uh, after clicking on the cell, I can drop down this menu and format this as number with one decimal place. I can do it that way, or you can double, uh, not double click, right click it, go to format cells, and go to what? Where's, where's my, ah, here we go. Number with one decimal place and hit OK. Now, you will lose tiny points if you don't format it the way they tell you to do. Um, so we got it. So the output heart rate is this. Now, why did we use cell reference? Why did we click on C10 instead of typing in 18? Um, the answer is 141.4. But what if I change this age to like uh, 
bit older than them, like 30 years old. And then you see how the heart rate went down. How about if I change that to 55 years old? It's going down a little bit. How about a baby? How about somebody who is two years old? Oh, really fast. Really fast, I guess. So uh, well, I'm, let me just go back to 18. So what this is doing is the output heart, heart, heart rate, this cell formula is using the number, whatever is saved in, or typed in C10. So that's the power of a, a of, of using cell form as reference and formula because an answer will change every time, right? That's convenient. All right, now what? Go back. We're done with step two. I'm going to mark it co uh, complete. All right, let's take a look at step three together. In cell C16, use the appropriate formula to calculate the heart rate for the age in cells B16. You notice it's the same exact thing, but then there's something new. They said, and they didn't say anything about formatting, but they said fill cell C16 down the column to cell C25. What does that mean? I'll show you, okay? So first, let's go in and type in that formula in C16, and we will do something called fill. So C16 down the column to C25. All right, you with me? Go to questions and then go find right here. This is what we're going to type in. Now remember the formula was equal sign, open parenthesis, 220 minus the age, right? The age is 10 years old. This time close the parenthesis times 70%. All right, so that is the heart rate formula. And I use cell reference. You notice when I clicked on B16, it highlighted that that cell in light blue. And I'm going to hit enter. So the heart rate for age 10 is 147. Now this is how you feel. Now watch very closely. I zoomed in like crazy. If you click on this cell, you see the tiny green box in the squ uh, square right here in the top right corner? Now if you put your mouse over, don't click anything yet. You see how the... The mouse cursor changes to like black cross. Not anywhere else it was like a white cross. But if I go right here, kind of put my mouse over that tiny green square, it's a black solid cross. Click on it. And then while you are clicking, drag it down. Drag it all the way down to C25. All the way down to C25 and let go. Ta -da. See, that's how you fill cells. And you're going to do this every... Uh, not, Probably every yeah. We're gonna do twenty Excel homeworks in the next six weeks, um, and you will do that in almost every assignment. Um, because what we just did was we copied this good formula that we typed in C sixteen all the way down to C twenty five. You notice how the outputs changed. Oopsies, one forty seven, one forty, one thirty three, one hundred and twenty six. You know it changed. It's going down, and as you can see. If I double click on this cell, the, the input for this 98 should be somebody who's 80 years old, right? So if you double click it, that, that's what it's doing. So it's copying the cell that is immediately to the left as its input to calculate the heart rate. And we will talk about how we can add a dollar sign or, you know, in front of it or, you know, to make sure that it keeps on using the number 10 or keeps on using a certain number. but what we wanted was we wanted the formula to move down with this formula because we want we, we, we want it to use the, the input age that is immediately to the left of it as we go down on this table. So that's how you do it. We're done with step number three. Let's take a look at the very last one together. Um, in cell K18 to R30, whenever you see something like this, they're just talking about this blue area. They want you to just kind of create a chart and put it in this blue area. And um, if you kind of make it too small or too big or not in this blue area I notice they take points off so just I'm gonna make sure that we create a chart and put that in that blue area uh, insert a cluster column chart remember the name of it we're gonna be making this one today clustered column chart to show the relationship between heart rate and age they want you to select range B16 to C25 so everything from B16 all the way down to C25 and then on the insert tab click on recommended charts and then what? And then click cluster column. Apply style six on design tab. I'm gonna do that much and then come back because this is a, it's a paragraph. Um, let me do that right now. B16 to C25. B16 is right here. C25 is down here. So notice what I'm clicking. They don't want you to click on the age and heart rate. B16 is the number 10. 
and C25 is at 84. So if I were, why we're not clicking on these? Because if you click on, or if you select the age and heart rate, it's going to automatically create those labels. But we're going to try to type that ourselves. So let's go ahead and click on B16 all the way to C. Uh, 2884 and then you know we're not gonna do this take a look we're not filling this we're not gonna click on this uh, dark square in the right and then like drag it down that's not what we want to do okay just click on this somewhere like maybe like this gray area where the cross is still you know white and chubby and then just select it that much go to insert where are you go to recommended charts and click on cluster column right there, the very first one. I'm using MacBook. So it may, be, it may look a little different on the uh, like Windows computer, but here we go. I got it. And then where did they, they want this chart? They want it in this blue area. Got it down to this blue area. Remember what style they wanted you to select? They wanted style number six. All right. So if you go up here, this is style number one. If you wait, it tells you the style. Style number two, style number three, four, five and six they wanted that specific style click on it Ta-da! so i did what i just read i'm gonna go back and do what else they're telling me to do and i can see this is going down now obviously we're gonna have to fix that chart title right all right let's see so um they want you to add chart title and choose above chart option replace chart title with heart rate now guys this isn't too long heart rate is an easy word that i can type but sometimes like later, they're going to ask you to type in like degree symbol Celsius or Fahrenheit. So if you want to just copy these heart titles, that's uh, not heart title, <laughs> chart titles and access title, that's not okay. So chart title, replace it with heart rate. I will click this chart title. Come on. Replace it with heart rate. Ta-da, one done. What else do they want? They want you to add axis titles, axis, horizontal axis and vertical axis. Uh, replace axis title for the horizontal axis with ages. I'm going age and parenthesis years. Now be careful with typos. I've seen people losing points for not typing S after the years. So horizontal axis will be age, parenthesis years. I just copied it, you see? I just copy it. So I don't trust my typing. All right, now this is how you add axis. So click on the chart, please. Click on the chart. Uh, go to, now let me bring my Excel down a little bit. Chart design. Click on this chart design and then add chart element. We're going to add axis title, primary horizontal, and what? Primary vertical. All right, now I added the titles over here. I want the horizontal axis title to change to, like I said, I don't trust my typings. I just copied it. Age, parenthesis, years. In parentheses, that looks perfect. Okay, now what was the horizontal axis? Or not horizontal, vertical axis? I gotta go back and find it. Um, um, an axis title for vertical axis to beats per minute. Like, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just select it and copy it. Ta-da, okay. Now I'm just gonna go and read this part. Note, the category X label should be from 10 to 100 with increment 10, is that right? 10 to 100 with increment of 10, 10, 20, 30. Yeah, that looks good. Now, let me go ahead and double click on this vertical axis title. And then just control V or command V on my laptop, beats per minute, and that looks good. That looks good. Now, that's it. That's all they wanted you to do on this. Oh, it looks really, really good. I go back to instruction, I mark. Step four is complete. Now we're gonna save file. Make sure you save this. Save it somewhere you know. I saved it, probably in my download folder. And you're gonna go ahead and submit your file uh, for grading. Let me go over that with you one more time. And I know I'll, I'll be going over that next Tuesday with you all. But what you will have to do is um, go in here. And this is where you click on download material is where you went to download the file. But now we're going to go to choose file. And then, where is my, oh gosh guys, I need to clean up my download folder. Ah, here it is. Sun, chapter 1, 1, heart rate starts. I'm going to click on that. As you can see, I'm working on 7.09 a.m. this morning. I'm going to open this. 
and then upload it. That's it. And then you submit for grading and you wait a little bit. They're going to grade it for you immediately. Now, Excel homework, you have unlimited attempts. So you get a grade. What you want, guys, is 8 out of 8. Now, this is still grading, so I'm not going to see it. Um, if you don't see it at 8 out of 8, then you get to go to the student grade book over here. Student grade book. And because I didn't open any assignments just yet, you're not going to see anything. But once the course is open on May 19th, you will see um, your assignments and the, the, the work that you submitted. And if it's not 8 out of 8, then you have to go and read the rubric and see what you did wrong. And then they're going to tell you how to fix it. Okay. Uh, one more thing that I want to talk about is how to submit the reflection because it's the very first Excel homework. All the Excel homeworks are going to be in the same format. You do the Excel part and then you type up a quick like two sentence or three sentence reflection about what you learned. Um, so if I go back, now fortunately I want to show you, like later in the semester I'll show you how we submit it together and it gives us 8 out of 8, yay! Um, but question two is what you have to type and you don't have to overthink this, okay? just have to type in Excel reflection and on the when we first go over the um, syllabus on the first day we will talk about um, how we want it to be like two or three sentences and what you just learned so you type up something like that I say I learned how to I learned how to um, type up some kind of you know what did you learn you can talk about heart rate you can talk about creating a cluster column chart you can talk about typing formula cell reference whatever just don't say, I didn't learn anything. I'll give you one point for that. I got a zero point for that. But just make it something. Um, talk about something that you learned. Because I think every Excel assignment, you will learn something new. Talk about it, okay? And then if you submit it, I go and read it myself. I have to ma manually grade that reflection part while my math lab will grade your Excel homework portion. Um, now, it's not supposed to be this long. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to make this video like 17 minutes, but just because it was a first one. But, you know, some are going to be short, some are going to be a little long, but this is what we're going to do. You, we just did the first Excel homework out of 20 together. Mm -hmm. And as you get, you know, some people start Math 154 hating these Excel homeworks. They're like, oh, I don't like this at all. This isn't a computer class. But... You know, later on, they all like it because it's, it's actually the easier part of Math 154, I think. So, um, hope you enjoy this. If you like watching videos and um, doing the homework together, this is some, somewhere you can always come back to. If you're fine with Google Slides, because I will always provide Google Slides for you. Um, and some never watch any of my YouTube videos. That's okay. So if you're fine with just reading the directions on your own, because in the Google Slides, I kind of give you a screenshot of, you know, what it should look like. So two resources that I'm providing for you, because even if you're brand new to Excel, if you never took computer classes, then this may be a little bit overwhelming. But first week, call me, email me. We can Zoom and go over these together if you want to. But this is a second resource that I wanted to provide for you on these Excel homeworks. And I'll continue recording every week, okay? All right, I'll talk to you later.